Hi guys, welcome to Beal Science. You know, I've never once started a video here in my office where I edit all of these videos, but I was working on the toilet paper cannon video and realized, you know, I became quite obsessed with Bernoulli's principle and exploring were there ways to visualize Bernoulli's principle that I could share with my students and share with other people, and then it quickly got out of hand. And I finally decided, I've got all these clips, why don't I put them together in a video so that other people who are marginally obsessed with Bernoulli's principle can maybe enjoy them as well. To start off with the first one, all we need is a straw that's a little bit bendy and some ping pong balls. Let's go bigger. Ready? There we go. So what is Bernoulli's principle? Well, I'm gonna walk you through it as we do these experiments, but I'm gonna kind of play in between because really, like I said, I'm just experimenting so that I can discover and understand what it really means. What happens if we add a few more balls to this? I have no idea, let's find out. But a very simplified definition of Bernoulli's principle is that faster moving air has a lower pressure, which is why these balls float. <laughs> I'm guessing this is overkill, but that's how we like to do things. Overkill, right? Ping pong ball and 110 mile an hour wind with the black and dead. Overkill. Let's take this off. See what that does. Maybe. No, there we go. I think we need a heavier ball. We've got lots of options. Let's see if one of these will work. First up, racquetball. So this is a good time to talk about physics. Now, obviously we've got this downward force, that's gravity pulling the ball towards the ground. And we got this upward force, that's the air pushing it up. So that's why it starts to hover, but why doesn't it fall? Why doesn't it get pushed out of the air and fall? Well, that's where Bernoulli's principle comes in. One thing you'll notice in all of these experiments is that the ball wobbles a bit. And that's because as the ball wobbles back and forth, it's the high pressure air, so that's the air that's not moving as fast, it's pushing it one direction and it falls back into that lower pressure air. And this happens back and forth. It oscillates and it gets stuck inside this oscillation of lower pressure and higher pressure air. And as you can see, I just kept stepping it up bigger and bigger as I was exploring how to visualize Bernoulli's principle. Now, one really good way to visualize it is to watch an airplane fly. An airplane wing is designed such that the air that's flowing over the top of the wing has to move faster. If it has to move faster, it's at lower pressure. The wing gets pulled up into that lower pressure zone and the airplane flies. That's the same reason that this ball isn't falling out of the sky. The air is pushing it up. It's trying to fall because of gravity, but it's getting pushed back and forth into this low pressure zone. I figured, hey, you know, let's do a little smoke and then maybe you can really see Bernoulli's principle in action. And it, it kind of worked. I mean, you can see the air flowing up around it, but I couldn't see everything I wanted to see. And another thing I kept getting fascinated with was this. If you've got fast enough moving air, it doesn't even have to be perfectly vertical. But I wanted to go even bigger. I wanted to really see this. So I got some rubber tubing. And then I started experimenting with different balls. What I landed with, what worked the best, was a foosball. The reason I chose this tube was it fits right in my hose. Now, you're seeing one very small part of many, many, many days of experimentation to see if I could get this to work. I don't know why it was so challenging, but it was. And eventually, this was a huge victory. I think we got hours of video just to get to this point. Now, why does this matter? You can really see Bernoulli's principle in action with this. Look at the ball, oscillating back and forth as it gets moved into the high pressure, it gets pushed back into the low pressure, and it just stays suspended. I thought, hey, we could probably see it even better if I colored the ball the same way as my inflatable ball that I used earlier. Look at this. This is Bernoulli's principle, visualized by a floating ball. 
Now earlier we used air, now we're using water, but both of them are fluids. Now, this might seem trivial to you, but this has actually taken a lot more work than you would have expected to get this ball to float in midair. And I think this models Bernoulli's principle beautifully. You can see it with our own eyes, see it moving around. Hey, we got a lot more going on over here at Beale Science. At BealScience.com, I'm getting soaked, people. This is science. Yeah, check it out. <laughs>